be a YouTuber, they said. It will be fun, they said. Imagine naming your podcast after a meme that doesn't even apply to you whatsoever. What's going on, everyone? It's your favorite host, and Jealous Hater Apoc, and welcome back to the channel. So I really see no need in creating an intro. You all know what the plan is, so let's just get to it. I really never thought, like... YouTube was a place for a community and stuff like that. I yeah. thought it was like how to cook eggs or like yeah, yeah, like same. To, like watch funny cat how videos, to change the tire. It's, yeah, yeah, cat videos and stuff like Which that. Which it so is. That's why I was never wearing clothes. I was always naked in the early videos. Yeah. Barf. So I'm not really sure how Karen didn't think that there was communities to YouTube when she came up watching Britney and Baby, who apparently inspired her to start her own vlog channel and was literally part of her community. Oh, and I still don't quite understand why they named their podcast. Baits. The meaning behind the phrase is based around getting fooled into doing something by someone else and then regretting it later on, which by the recent upload on YouTube, I failed to see the regret. Plus, YouTube is the only reason why they achieved all their dreams and goals. Nah, -uh, Epoch, they worked hard. Yeah, well, check this one out. I just want to say um, a lot of our achievements and, and goals that we've hit is a big thanks to you guys. Yeah. Um, a lot of the awesome things that happen in our, in our life is a is thanks to you guys so i just want to say thank you and we're so grateful for you these goons claim to give all their youtube money to their children on another platform while on this one they say that's not what they do at all all their dreams and all their goals have always been based around fast cars boats jet skis bougie homes lifestyles and gucci and never about anything else so if they don't spend their youtube money on those type of things then why in the hell are they thanking their community for those things and claiming it would not be possible without them. And then I started getting a following and you're like, well, wait, don't show me right now. Don't put that in. Yeah, no, it's because people start getting offended. Oh, yeah. People They're like, like oh my God. hey, listen, you, your, your Asian ass husband isn't wearing clothes around your yeah. mother. Oh, they call you black Asian. Yeah. You literally get comments about calling being a black Asian. Every time our videos trended on YouTube, they'd call me the N-word. Well, maybe they have black friends, Qua. I mean, wasn't that your excuse for saying the N-word? Yeah, exactly. Every time. Yep. I'm like, dude. Yeah. Chill. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, so YouTube is an interesting place. Mm -hmm. A lot of weirdos. Well, isn't that the pot calling the kettle black? They're actively out here just casually laughing about racism towards Asians and people of color. But hey, what should we expect from these two? Who get caught in 4K being racist and using racial slurs against their own children. And when pressed about it by their own community, Karen has the whole don't like it, don't watch it mentality. And that the racism isn't going anywhere. Let's also not forget Qua and Blackface. It's just so funny last year how they hopped on the trend train. My kids are gonna grow up and be made fun of for the way they look. While actively making fun of his own kids for the way they look. So yeah, they will be made fun of by you guys. Oh, and on another note, they cut themselves off yet again, probably due to more arguing. So that's why this next clip seems just so out of place. We had a, we had a fan drive by yesterday. On a dang golf cart, so our neighbors are. Yeah, are, so now we're. At I the mean, point we can't. Can like, we? Can we call our neighbors stalkers? No, you can't. It's like they live in our neighborhood, but like it is stalking if they go down our street and and like take it's, notes. But, and what's take weird is like us, everyone huh? knows where we live. It's like this is like pointless because it's literally search cake and maybe J address pops up. Oh my god! So imagine complaining about privacy issues, right? And how people on the internet are weirdos while you actively tell the world that your address is just a click away. No notes are even needed. These two will provide all the information that any one real stalker would need. And look, just because someone drives by your home with their phone out doesn't mean that they're filming you or that they care about you or that they even know who you are. I mean, just imagine what it's like for other people seeing these two lames recording in their cars with their cannon and talking to it. Karen and Qual want to be stalked so bad. Karen, don't publicly <laughs> say it's that. It's already, it's known. Son of a... But... But nothing. I'm so sick and tired of these two 
bitching and moaning about their privacy being violated, while in the same breath telling the internet that their address is free game on Google. If you really felt so unsafe as you guys love to claim, then why are you just casually doing this? Potentially inviting more unwanted visits from randoms. This is apparently the mindset of people who were so scared to live in this house, but somehow, while talking about these stalkers, they really don't seem all that pressed, do they? We live in a cul-de-sac. Who the hell's driving down a cul-de-sac just to turn back out of the neighborhood? People who just want to turn their cars around. <laughs> Actually, that one time I was washing your car yeah. in the driveway. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. These two girls turn in in yeah. a red Hyundai. I hope you guys... I was hope it you a red this. Hyundai? Yeah, I was by myself. It was uh -oh. a red Hyundai. Drove in, wearing hats. Did a U-turn in the cul-de-sac, took pictures of me staring at them, and they left. This is their example of stalking. <laughs> then they left the neighborhood. I think the ones that show up with their parents no, remember those are the worst. Two that came. Were you there? And you answered the door. Oh, and I was yelling at them? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry if you've come to my house and I've yelled at you, but... Yo, know, imagine pretending that you have thousands and thousands of stalkers while apologizing to them for apparently stalking you and violating your privacy. Bruh. Oh, were you, were, you were there? Yeah. You I can't didn't... show up at our house and expect us to be nice to you. you. Were there. Says the girl who just apologized to the stalkers for violating their personal space. Paul will be nice to you because he's yeah. crazy. You can't just show up at our house and expect us to be nice to you. Yeah, you can because Qual will. So I'm like, my voice is all shaky and I'm like, this is not okay. You cannot come to my house. So I was yelling in Starbucks. Everyone's staring at me. But the only reason I started yelling is because whenever you start with a sentence, I know this is a huge invasion of your privacy, but like if you know that this is a huge invasion of privacy, why are you here? Oh, I don't know, Karen. Maybe because of crap like this. Thank you guys so much for your support over the years. None of this would have ever been possible without you guys. And we just want to show our appreciation yeah. and say thank you. Thank and you, Nani thank for you sure so much. says thank you, thank you, thank you too. He is the best. Yeah. Um, so in a way, this is you guys surprising Nani <laughs> with, with her own house. All of us. Yeah. So thank you guys. We appreciate you. And family. And family. And family. And family. So when you call your audience members family and you invite them into your life with all the private and personal moments all unfiltered, you're going to have people who think stuff like this is okay. It's Especially if you don't put them in check, and especially if they're young, which is their main demographic, by the way. Funny how grown-ass adults can't see that. Also, these same grown-ass adults gaslight their community into thinking that they're close with them, and then they get mad when somebody actually shows up. But they were made to feel like that stuff was okay. And that's what I'm saying. Don't show up at people's houses. Parents, don't take your kids to people's houses that you don't just don't. Or here's a thought, Karen. You could just create boundaries with your fans. You know, limits. Instead of complaining about stalkers and then posting your address online, which they both did after the fact. But if you just take some extra steps, just little teeny tiny little steps to protect yourself and your family, these things wouldn't happen. But who are we kidding here? This is Karen and Kwa we're talking about, who had all these privacy violations yet still do house doors and show the blue blueprint to their life for money. Let's also stop this ridiculous rhetoric about how these people are stalkers. Those girls were just super fans who wanted to meet their idols in person, who were misled into thinking that it was okay to do that. Literally by Karen and Qua. And yeah, it was wrong and still is, but they were just young and dumb. I mean, one would think that Karen and Kwa would have some sort of empathy for them because nobody's perfect, right? People make bad decisions, right? I mean, they've apparently made some bad decisions themselves and they will use that young and dumb mentality anytime they want as an excuse to justify their behavior and actions. So why doesn't that apply to anyone else? Why is it that they automatically just label anybody against them or anybody who does something a little weird? They label them a jealous hater or a stalker when it could have just been a mistake 
I don't know, just seems a little off if you ask me. It's also a little ironic too, since Qua was arrested for breaking into cars, violating personal space and property to steal shit that wasn't his. Plus when someone like Qua wants to coach or take under his wing so he can be like a guru or something, the very same people who apparently stole over $4,000 worth of material garbage from them. It gives me very strange vibes. Hey, Karen just had an argument. I don't know if she's going to put that in or not. Cuts out all the bickering, but doesn't cut out the part where she states that her home address is easily found online. Karen, you interrupt me all the time, don't you? Yes, but I'm... Do I get mad about it? I just say, okay, let me finish. Okay. You legit Baby, because get that's too angry. Baby, time that you did it during this... 19 minutes. Okay, but Karen, you get too mad. Oh god, here we go again. Don't blow up. I won't blow up. Okay. Sorry. Keep composure. Keeping composure. Thank you. Like, should we rename this podcast Composure? No, you should just rename it Karen Has Anger Issues and How I Deal With It. Because it seems like we're just going to be talking about all the things we're salty about. <laughs> no, we're not. We need to this keep is... our composure. We're just... Making the first episode. Yeah, and it's dog water. Also, yet again, they go off topic, go figure, talking about a whole lot of nothing. So I cut that part out again. The whole first episode of the podcast was supposed to be about us getting our dream cars and having everything that we've We've accomplished the goals that we set forth in high school. No, actually, that really wasn't the point of this episode. It's called We Bought a $200,000 Sports Car and Why People Are Jealous. Not We Achieved All Our Dreams So You Can Too. They do not even state not one time in this episode of how any of their dreams were attained. They just talk about how they worked hard with no context at all. When you want to motivate others, maybe you should explain the process of. Otherwise, how will other people know of what steps to take to achieve their dreams. Also, again, let's note, whenever they talk about their dreams and goals, it's always based around money and material possessions. You know, something shiny. And yet, never anything practical. And now, we want to press on whatever. How'd you say it? How does <laughs> she expect to inspire others when she doesn't even know the words to do so? Press upon? Yeah, that... Anyone can that do anyone it. can do it. Yeah, but that's why their podcast name is based off of regret. I, I think what you meant to say was, uh, we're not trying to impress anyone. Yeah. We're just trying to show everyone that they can do it too. Yeah. Imagine stating that you want to motivate others to achieve all their dreams and goals by showcasing yours while also stating that those same people that you're trying to inspire are not entitled to your dreams and goals. Bruh. People think we have to show everything about our life. Says that in the same podcast that's based around YouTube where they have showed every part about their lives for like the past six years even to the point of daily vlogging no one said to share anything they chose to do that themselves for money plus if your goal is to motivate you kind of need to open up and not have that attitude otherwise it makes no sense it's also hilarious how they have this you're not entitled energy when it comes to cars or other material garbage but when it comes to randoms asking about their children there seems to be no issue in fact if you wonder to what their kids do in a day all you gotta do is ask and they'll post a whole ass vlog about it oh should we tell them about the porsche that we used to have oh yeah we did we had a yeah, porsche for so like seven days <laughs> guys guys we are allowed to keep things private but want to hear about the porsche that we have for a week that's irrelevant to the conversation and has nothing to do with what we're talking about based around inspiration because we purchased it on a bet and wasn't even a dream car of ours it's not a normal porsche it was a gt3 it's a 4.0 yeah. with a manual transmission and so it's like a crazy ass supercar as yeah. well also, yeah. everyone, while you're here, go follow Karen's Audi. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Go give her a follow. She's she's a well she's, she's a well known no, stalker no. of ours. No, no. Yeah, guys, go follow her stalker. So just to be fully transparent, the reason why Karen is telling her cronies to go follow this girl isn't to be cute and quirky or to act like she's not pressed. She's just indirectly telling her community to go bully and harass this person. She knows the power she has and holds as an influencer, and to what her little fetuses will do for her, which is doing her dirty work. Do you really? think that Karen just wants them to follow her after publicly announcing 
that she's an apparent stalker of theirs. She purposely sent off her legions to do the very same thing that she complains about. Plus, this isn't the first time that Karen has done something like this. When someone called her out for faking her so-called miscarriages, she put them on blast in front of her 500,000 plus followers where they flooded the personal account with some real and actual hate, bullying and harassing her to the point of deleting her account. We don't even know if this was a minor or not, but I guess that's just what Karen would call staying in your light. Mind you, the girl who tried exposing Karen for the Audi didn't do anything abnormal or weird from what their community already does on the daily. Plus, you know, I think trying to out Karen for having a bougie car that she was already planning to announce later on and want to motivate others with is definitely not as pressing as those weirdos who stockpile pictures of their children online to share with other random people across the globe. Priorities. So, and she tries really hard. She's honestly put a lot of work into this job that she's created. She didn't get paid for it. It's not a job. Yeah, like think <laughs> so, about it. She has to like pause every millisecond. She has to like stare at the screen at our videos for every single video trying yeah. to find like little glimpses of it. Even got me like giving a hint when Jackson was like, your white car. Is so it's really not that much work when you're literally leaving hints in the vlogs. Imagine if she worked on herself rather than like on us. She Imagine actually ignoring things like this that don't actually matter when you claim to do that. Let's be real here though. How big was this Instagram? How much attention do you actually think it got? Not much at all. Because Karen buying a car doesn't matter. Who cares? But why is it that when people bring up such meaningless garbage, both Karen and Kwa hop on that so fast and draw more attention to it so that they can get affirmations from little girls? Yet when others like myself actually expose real issues like lies, manipulation, and deceit, they seem to be completely silent on the matter. I mean, it's not like they don't know who I am. You're telling me that they noticed some random posting about Karen's Audi on Instagram with maybe 100 followers or so, yet they don't know I exist, the biggest voice against them, who's made video after video after video calling out their bad behavior and shitty actions, and not that they actually bought a car because I don't care. I mean, they must know I exist, right? They both only have blocked me on Instagram. But hey, you know, must be a glitch. Just seeing the passion, honestly, honestly, seeing the passion that she has for exposing me on this, if she put that passion into anything, she could be so successful. How the hell do they know if she's successful or not? They're basing that off of their own opinions from nothing. This all could just be done on her free time when she's bored. I mean, Karen is apparently so successful, but she has stalked somebody platform to platform, contacting their friends, family, and work, and making up lies about them trying to ruin their life over a comment that she just didn't like. But I failed to see how pausing a vlog on some car keys can lead to any sort of success. It doesn't really take much effort. But hey, what do we expect from Karen, the girl who knew nothing about fitness or even really had a weight loss journey, who used a post C-section photo as her weight loss before and after pic? Oh my God, Karen, how'd you lose so much weight? Maybe it was the six weeks after cutting off all the pregnancy bloat. And that's the whole point of this. Take, like, take this drive that you have for exposing or whatever. Are you following? Did you just follow? <laughs> Taylor just followed. For exposing and just, or whatever, whatever it is, hating or just being, I don't want to say jealous. Yeah, jealous or whatever. I don't want to say jealous, but yeah, jealous. What is she talking about? Telling others that they're just jealous is literally her go-to argument for anything. Just put it towards She could anything. buy her own Audi one she day. She could literally do anything whatever. with that kind of drive. Exactly. Like, I wish I had that drive for something. But Karen, I thought you worked hard. And you know, Qua, not everyone wants to waste their money on a bougie $200,000 sports car. Which, by the way, in the description, they claim was a bad decision to buy. So why would anybody be jealous of that or even would want the car when you're telling everyone that it was a bad decision to do? Exactly. I wish I had that drive for something. Actually, I do. Yeah. But that's I, how you have an Audi. Exactly. No, she has an Audi because she monetized her children. If Karen had any actual drive to succeed on her own, KCAS would have never tanked and would have been so much more than it was. Funny how they claim success based from vlogging for three years straight, but anything outside of that out in the real world has flopped. But literally, like that kind of passion is the kind of passion that you need to have, and she literally has it. 
but she's driving it into the wrong. Yeah. She's driving it into the ground. Oh, you mean like you did with Kick Ass? Drove that business right into the ground because you didn't have any passion or drive to keep it going? I love it when they talk about things and act as if they know anything about it. Anyways, all you jealous haters, that's about it. I was only going to make this episode two parts, but I'm having some technical difficulties on my end. So I guess we'll just be making a third part where Karen just casually admits that her and her friend Taylor stalked someone online, which is super ironic because most of this podcast episode has been about privacy violations and stalkers and how that stuff is wrong. But that's it for now, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Okay, bye.